Hello, Life Group family. We are on week three of our series on community where we are diving into AI, the differences between artificial and authentic interactions. This week, I wanna share with you 10 key points in the Bible that highlight what authentic community looks like. As the Lord has been transforming our perspectives in this series, taking us from a place of knowing to a place of experiencing or walking in revelation about the way he designed us to interact, let us lay down our preconceived ideas of what these key points look like. Pastor Abby posed this profound difference to us last week. Do we have a relationship with Jesus or a relationship around Jesus? I want to encourage you today as we go through these points to ask Jesus to reveal to you anything that might be hindering you or that you are leaning on your own understanding in and letting him transform it into something so much better with him at the center of it all. We have, tr we have all tried too many times in our lives to build something on our own. And it feels like it's way harder than it should be, takes way more attention and effort than it should, starts sucking away our peace, our joy, our serenity, and it doesn't produce anything lasting or worthwhile. The Lord is declaring in this season that he is redefining our understanding of kingdom community and the family of God, and he's putting grace in it for us to succeed and for us to build with him. Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 in the message says, this is a unique father-son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. The things that the Lord is revealing are unique to the family relationship he has with us and need to be received as sons and daughters to fully be grasped. Father, I ask that you would open our eyes to see, open our ears to hear, open our spirits to be awake and aware of what you are revealing in this season. Transform us and renew us as your children so that we can interact with you as you designed us to. Thank you, Lord. Here are the 10 keys. I'm gonna ask you, talk to you about these keys and ask you a question at the end of it. And I want you to ask the Lord with your group about what the truth is and what he reveals in it. Number one, devoting ourselves to fellowship and teaching. This comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 42. I've enjoyed fellowship and appreciated and learned from teaching, but what does it look like to devote ourselves to them? To prioritize the gathering, gatherings as essential for spiritual growth and fulfilling the designs of the Lord. Number two, practice genuine love and care. This is found in Romans 12, verses 9 and 10. Showing sincere and genuine concern and love when we see the needs in others, emotionally, spiritually, and practically. What does it look like to prioritize loving like the Lord when he shows you the needs in those around you? Number three, encouraging one another. Found in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, this is such a powerful key to healthy community. Regularly encouraging fellow believers, spurring one another on to love and good deeds, all the more as we approach the day of the Lord. We encourage when we see people that are down, but what does it look like to regularly encourage those around us, calling out the good in them, speaking life into them, lifting them up and encouraging them so that they shine in the truth of who God created them to be on a regular basis? Number four, bearing each other's burdens. Galatians 6 verse 2 says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. It's not taking on the heaviness of those around you and or martyring yourself until you burn out. Jesus invites us to cast all of our cares on him, and he will give us easy yokes and light burdens. When you bear the burdens of those around you by helping them cast the weightiness on Christ, what does that look like? Number five, cultivate humility and unity. Philippians 2 verses 3 and 4 call us to embrace humility and seek the good of others above our own. Avoid selfishness and work towards unity in the church by valuing others' needs and perspectives. What do humility and unity really have to do with each other? What does that look like? Number six, forgive and reconcile with each other. Colossians 3 verse 13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Letting go of offense and bitterness is huge when building community. The Lord has taken me through seasons where he had me pre-forgive those I was working with, knowing full well that there would be offensive things coming. What does it look like to have forgiveness and reconciliation empowered by the Lord at the forefront in our community? Number seven, serve one another. 1 Peter 4 verse 10 says, Each of us should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. When we serve each other, we are stewarding God's grace. What does serving one another look like when it's a direct application of God's grace into our community? 
Number eight, commit yourselves to prayer. James 5 verse 16 says, therefore confess and pray for each other so that you may be healed and restored. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. We are called to pray for each other, to intercede on each other's behalf. And it's in the context of prayer for our community over each other that scripture reveals the power and effectiveness of prayer. Have you ever been frustrated with the ineffectiveness of your prayer over you and yours? What does it look like for a healthy community to be powerfully and effectively praying over each other? Number nine, practice hospitality. Romans 12 verse 13 tells us to share with the Lord's people who are in need, practicing hospitality. When was the last time that you opened your home or your life to others without an agenda involved? Hospitality breaks down barriers and fosters deeper connections by creating an environment that welcomes those who are different from us. Number 10 is my favorite, speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4.15 says, instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, Jesus Christ. This key is so essential and so tricky to do well at the same time. The truth sets us free, and according to this verse, this is the method that we become mature and fit together well as the body of Christ. What areas do you need to speak truth and love in that results in freedom and transformation, maturity and unity as a body, not condemnation or division? Let's ask the Lord to speak the truth and love to us so we can get healthy and mature, walking in unity as a community with Jesus' perspective, the mind of Christ showing us the right way to go. This is really getting good. I love this series on community. Love you, family. We'll see you next time.